Hello everybody! Hey everyone! <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the second part of the labor delivery pregnancy Q&A. These are the questions that you guys submitted on my Instagram um, and so we picked out the ones that were kind of like the most asked questions. Yep. And um, baby Adriana is just waking up. If you watched the first part, she fell asleep, so <laughs> she's just waking up now. Um, so without further ado, you guys know I tend to talk a lot. So let's jump right into the questions because I have a feeling this will be a long video again. <laughs> All right, here we go. So what was your workout uh, routine during pregnancy? And when did you return to the gym afterwards? So um, I kept working out right up until I think week 38, I think yeah. two weeks prior is when I said, okay, you know what, I probably should stop. I probably could have kept going with lighter things, but you know what, I felt more tired and heavier, so I just decided that it was fine uh, to stop. So what I modified when I got bigger and as I got bigger was just uh, eliminating anything to do with like, you know, legs and squats and anything like that. And I just kept doing more upper body, you know, lighter um, weights and things like that. And the reason I continued is because it made me feel better physically. Like I was so tired um, because I was going to school full time, and so if I didn't, if I didn't continue to be active, I would have been way more tired and just have way less energy than I did. And um, so that's the only modifications I did for the actual workouts. And then when I was able to go back, is I think it was like two months, two months, six weeks, something like that. Yeah, between six, six weeks to and seven two weeks. months, it depends yeah. on exactly. Yeah. So, and I've only been to the gym a couple of times, you know, like maybe once or twice a week at the most, only because you're a new mom, <laughs> you have very little time. And even though you have, you know, I have you, who is a very supportive uh, partner, it's still hard to leave her. It's when she's sleeping during the day for a couple of hours, you're doing other things, running around. You know, if you're trying to eat healthy, cooking yourself, it's a lot of work, you know, it takes a lot of time. So I don't have as much time to work out, but I do my best to go to the gym whenever I can. And I'm back to my regular routine that I had previously and what I what I was doing before and what I was doing now, I talked about it in my pregnancy video, is the hourglass workout. Um, I don't know if I linked it before, but just if you re if you Google hourglass workout, you'll find that. I, I got the plan, the member plan, and so I followed that. It works for me. It's like divided into exercises and I do that. That's that question. <laughs> question number two, have you made any changes to your diet during pregnancy and after birth? During pregnancy, the only things I think I changed or added was drinking uh, red raspberry leaf tea or raspberry leaf tea, uh, but I think it's like 36 or 38 weeks onward, 36 I think. Um, and that, that tea, is it's an herbal tea, obviously, and it's supposed to help uh, tone the uterus. So during labor, it helps you, and then after in recovery, it helps to like tone it back up, right? Yeah. So that, and then also my second grandma, I call her my mom, my grandma's sister, basically, she recommended that I eat dates, um, which they're supposed to help with milk production, and so I was eating that every day before. And with the birthing process, I think. And with the birthing process as yeah. well, I don't know how. So. Those two things I think were the only things I added into my diet. I didn't really subtract anything. I kept craving and I still crave sweets, which is very weird for me because before then I never really liked sweets. And uh, so, but I, I think the most important thing to remember is to have balance <laughs> in life, in your diet, and in your relationships, everything. So I have whatever I want in moderate uh, amounts yeah, and um, I don't like depriving myself. So if I feel like having a piece of chocolate or a piece of cake or I don't know anything else that's sweet ice cream or whatever I'll have a little bit and then I feel like I don't deprive myself because if I'm walking around wanting something and I can't have it then your mind is constantly thinking about that and it's not healthy to me I'd rather have a little piece and I feel like that is way healthier than walking around craving something and then not being able to have it so okay question number three question three uh, how did you prepare yourself for the birth this is probably the most important question that I want to talk about and cover and the reason why I wanted to talk about even my pregnancy to begin with and labor and that would be going with a more natural approach and that is hypnobirthing. If you've never heard of the term hypnobirthing, it's basically a guided meditation for preparing your mind and preparing your body for the birth experience. And something that really bothers me and something that I really now, whoever asks me about my experience and advice, I really feel passionate about is unfortunately in our culture, there is this 
fear-based mindset around uh, the birthing experience and pregnancy and giving birth and, and in movies and anywhere else it's portrayed as this like obviously painful experience but like a scary experience you know and for me I don't know somehow intuitively I felt like it is a beautiful experience like as women we're so blessed to be able to experience raising a human being inside of us and then bringing that human being into the world so I wanted that experience to be beautiful for me and so I primed myself as soon as I found out I was pregnant even without I without actually practicing hypnobirthing I just was trying to connect to the baby trying to imagine the birth as a natural you know like natural thing that my body knew how to do and having that trust in your body that is I think one of the most important things and <laughs> she's like, she's talking, so she's like, uh -huh. <laughs> anyways that, that that is something that i really really want to stress that you know if you have fear around the birth experience because you've heard horror stories you know or you read horror stories or whatever the case might be do your very best to try to i don't know practice positive thinking practice meditation practice breathing practice visualizing the ideal birth that you desire and over time it will make a difference you know it will help you to manifest the kind of experience the kind of positive it's still going to be painful i'm not going to lie to you but a smooth easy delivery i would say i really really feel that the the reason my experience was so fast like it's kind of unheard of to be seven eight centimeters dilated and not be in labor like not be in active labor right like because normally what happens is you're dilating a centimeter an hour so technically i should have been in the hospital for at least 10 12 10 hours, hours before even pushing before pushing and that was not my experience and i really really i know that like i know that intuitively 100 percent that it's due to the fact that i was practicing positive thinking and visualizing and hypnobirthing just research it you don't even have to if you feel like you need to go to classes by all means i didn't feel like i needed to do that i just found some program online and I just kept listening to that you know it's like a guided meditation okay. like I said you know uh, so as many times as you feel you need to to prepare yourself mentally yeah, and, and, you, and you actually listen to it with your partner so yeah. both of you are doing it together because yeah. that's the point the the way for, for me to support Lilo is yeah. that I know that she was going doing that so if I'm trying to talk to her or trying to give her advice and she's trying to meditate at that time it's obviously distracting that's so right. if I know that she's meditating and she's trying to do the hypnobirthing I'm also doing it with her so my energy is supportive of her the energy that she's trying to then also give to the baby that's so. right it's very important that all the people that are present in the room are aware of what's happening and you know the birthing partner and whoever is delivering the baby is yeah. on board and i told my midwives ahead of time that this is what i was doing and i wanted to have the lights dimmed in the room and i brought our um, like a sound machine and yeah. have like waves you know like the sound of the waves is very soothing to me you know i love the ocean so whatever experience you want to create for yourself be confident in order so. to create be confident to like have that experience to create that experience for yourself because that is the most important thing if you feel comfortable and if you feel prepared mentally and you're not coming from fear your experience will be a hundred percent different you know yeah. I'm not saying that it will be easy there might be some complications but you'll be well equipped to handle whatever comes your way like I said I had in the previous video we had the unexpected thing of her being posterior and I could have freaked out in that moment I didn't why because I was prepared mentally that no matter what i trust this process i trust universe god whatever you want to call it you know you surrender to the experience and you feel you feel like you trust your body to do what it's designed to do so that's a very long answer but i feel like it's very important <coughs> next question why did you decide on a drug-free natural birth that goes in line with what i was saying for me it was a matter of principle like i was just like i didn't know what to expect i had some anxiety obviously but i also knew that you know as women thousands and thousands and millions of us previously have done it you know naturally without drugs so it's possible you know our body is capable of enduring that and um, the reason I wanted to have it drug free is because I wanted to feel everything I, I you know even if even though it's painful even though it's scary because you don't know what to expect I wanted to be in control basically and I, I know that with you know the drugs and the epidural you know you kind of are numb from waist down yeah. so to me that's actually scarier to not feel anything like I would feel like I'm not in control I don't know what the hell going on and that to me is a lot scarier than feeling the pain I wanted to be able to feel everything to be connected to my baby to feel when my body wanted to push when it wanted to contract for how long so if I could give you any advice you know I mean obviously it's a personal choice so if you like you want to do that by all means but for me I did it without drugs and I would do it again even though it was the most painful experience of my life but the way I felt everything and the way
way the baby was um, I think in the previous video Dimitri mentioned that her heart rate never went up and that's so important because she felt connected to me and I felt connected to her and it's just like self-explanatory right it's it's natural it's it's more positive there's no stress involved it's just beautiful really yeah. it's a beautiful experience even though it's painful and scary when you're you don't know what to expect but I would definitely advocate to do it naturally if you can if you feel like you're capable of that so. Next question. How did you decide on her name? So uh, Layla and I, we did um, lists. We did individual lists. I made a list of names. She made a list of names. You know, and then we got together and we, we basically compared lists. There was four or five names that we both chose that we really, really liked. But we didn't actually decide on a name until she was born. And we yeah. thought that when you see the baby, you'll be able to make a decision and it will be a right decision because you'll, ju you'll just know that it's the right name it for her. It suits this particular suits this, baby. This you know? baby. Yeah. So. so when she was actually born, you know, we both looked at her and we're like, Adriana? And, yeah. and we were like, yeah, uh, Adriana. Like, it, yeah. it just it's just suited her. The energy of the name and the energy of the baby it had to be connected. I intuitively felt like that was going to be the one, but I didn't want to make a 100% decision until we actually met her, right? Yeah. So that's how we chose the name. So our next question, how was the breastfeeding? process was it easy to start and how is it going now so uh, as you guys know if some of you that might know I have breast implants so I was wondering whether or not I'd be able to breastfeed even though I did my research prior to getting my breast implants done and I made sure to have them done under the muscle so really if they're under the muscle there's really no correlation between the breast the milk ducts and the actual implant so like I was hoping to I was able to breastfeed if there was no issue with that I even before I gave birth I a couple I don't know, a couple of weeks prior to the birth, I was in the shower and I was, you know, obviously cleaning myself and I noticed my uh, nipples producing this like yellowish kind of a substance. And so I didn't even know that prior to milk, you have something that's called colostrum and that's like a... A low calorie nutrient rich substance that the baby needs is like very important in their first few days of life before the milk comes so I was really happy when I saw that because that signaled to me that my body was preparing you know for breastfeeding oh. and so obviously you know when she was born I also prior to that I researched how to do proper latching because I think some of the women that have a hard time breastfeeding are just don't know how to do the, you know the baby has to latch on properly to be able to stimulate both so that the you know the milk produces Let's try the, the soup. Thinking of breastfeeding, <laughs> Adriana is like, I want my milk now. I want my milk. Anyhow, so what I do, uh, yeah, let me just backtrack a little. So I had the colostrum for three days, and then on day three, I woke up with huge engorged breasts. Like the milk supply came in and my breasts yeah. felt like they were literally going to explode. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and we didn't get a, bre a, a pump, breast pump, because I didn't know if I was gonna have milk, how much milk was I gonna have. And at that point, I really was scared. I was like, oh my God, because she's tiny. She doesn't drink a lot, right? She was maybe getting an ounce or so. Yeah, and it months. felt like there was like over 10 ounces, definitely. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to get this milk out of me somehow because it felt like they were getting bigger and bigger so <laughs> Dimitri went out and saved the day and went and got a pump and came home and I pumped and I think I got I don't know how many like two yeah, of those two whatever however eight, much eight it, was. Ounces, I don't yeah. it was yeah it was so crazy but the yeah. first experience I felt like literally like that's what cows feel like you know you're like <laughs> producing yeah. but I mean that's Betsy. yeah <laughs> any any mammals obviously breastfeed but um anyway so that was my experience I was luckily able to breastfeed and continue to do so breastfeeding exclusively I pump and freeze some for later you know for a rainy day so to speak um, and also whenever I want to step out go to the gym or go to the store or whatever Dimitri is able to you know breastfeed her and it gives us the flexibility and she goes back and forth between bottle and breast no problem because some people talk about nipple confusion and all that and yeah. again it's like the energy that you bring into it I was confident that she wasn't gonna get confused that I, I trusted that she would know the difference and she would be okay and that's exactly what happened she took the bottle she takes the breast back and forth no problem nope. knock on wood <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, did you experience postpartum blues? Yeah, this is actually another one, uh, another question that I wanted to talk about because, you know, sometimes it's the whole birthing experience and what you feel afterwards like I didn't know that you know that there is the blues associated with it or anything like that because you know you kind of feel like you're in this 
seventh heaven and there's this new baby in your life and everything is so happy but really it's a very stressful experience on your psyche even right to go through like being two people to having a third person in there and then the responsibility of taking care of this being and that her well-being and her happiness depends on you it's a lot to handle so on day three i experienced uh, i guess it's called the baby blues or whatever yeah. i just felt like i guess depression symptoms like everything was just dark it just felt like a dark cloud over my head and it doesn't help that you you're not sleeping so really for the, the prior three days and even before giving birth you're not sleeping well because you're big and you go to the bathroom every two hours or whatever even less so I did I experienced a little bit of darkness and it was scary and, and we talked about it um, as well and I shared some of my fears and what I was going through and it was scary for you too I think because yeah. you know and at, at that moment you don't know if it's gonna last or not and luckily f that day somehow I, I don't remember if she slept longer or you took over something happened where I was able to sleep for like two or three hours stretch and when I woke up I just felt like myself again I felt refreshed and like even though you're only sleeping for like two three hours it makes a difference like sleep is so so important because you have no time to recover right your body is going through so much trying to get rid of you know whatever is left in there in your uterus and like the breastfeeding is helping the uterus to contract so you're like shedding all this water and fluids and it's it's tough it's the recovery process is not pretty on the body and because you're not sleeping you have no time to recover and heal so it's just tough but day four and onwards luckily for me and for us I was able to like go back to feeling normal even though you're tired and you're exhausted but I didn't feel I felt like that dark cloud was gone thank god <laughs> and, and then another good thing with the midwives that they actually come um, I think they they do home two, visits yeah day two day four every two every two days for the first week, week yeah uh, after she's born mm -hmm. and they also you know give you an information package and in the package it said that you know on the third day there are you might expect yeah. to have baby blues and, and, you and know, that it's normal, normal and, yeah. and don't worry about it and I I, I didn't think Layla knows but I actually had a private conversation with the midwives and no, to I ask um, you know what how about if it's how how would it, how about if it's postpartum depression? How will I know that's different than what's what's in the package? And uh, Karen said that there's actually a, a survey online or not survey sorry online test that you can take uh -huh. that um, that you do and then it tells you you know maybe but best thing to go to see a, to see a professional if there is symptoms or whatever the whatever the test results are. All right. So um, and she said you know just be there and, and talk and, and just listen support. And, and support yeah. and and you'll see you'll you'll know yourself if if something's really really off and it stays off for a while then it's something to worry about but you know I, I didn't think that was gonna happen I just didn't want to delude myself into believing no 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 she's not and it's, she does yeah, yeah you want to be prepared right? basically so right? yeah exactly <clears throat> so you know I talked to Leila we had a conversation about what was going on and and how she was feeling and, and she just, just again started getting better exactly what she said I had some sleep finally <laughs> uh, and she felt like a normal person again which is yeah. what you know that's what sleep helps helps do obviously yeah, right so, so basically if you experience something like that don't get alarmed it is yeah. normal i didn't even know that it was so it's it's all part of the process part of getting adjusted to being a mother <laughs> So next question, uh, what skincare do you do for stretch marks? I talked about it in my pregnancy update video and really guys, the only thing I did and the only thing I continue to do is use coconut oil. One ingredient, organic coconut oil, that's all I've been using on my body all over once I get out of the shower. I haven't used any specific creams or anything like that for stretch marks. I think though, I really can't attribute it to that fully because I think genetics have to do a lot with it. My mom didn't have any stretch marks and, yeah, and, your grandma. and my grandmother obviously like the, the women generations going back didn't have so I think I really can't take any credit it's just genetics unfortunately you know if it runs in your family I don't know if there's anything you can apply or do I can't really speak to that in my experience the only thing I did was use coconut oil and I continue to do that I love I love it it's the best thing ever I just add a little bit of uh, lavender oil the essential oil into it I, I melt the coconut oil mel uh, add the lavender oil into it and then it solidifies back and it's like it's like a natural cream the best thing ever nice. Yeah. Alright, next question. Uh, what routines do you have with a baby? So now that she is, uh, I guess, 11 weeks, 10, 11 yeah. weeks, we're slowly finding our routine. Um, for the first, the first two weeks, I would say, are the hardest. Yeah. And I'm very grateful that Dimitri was able to take some time off work and stay home for those two weeks because it's really, really hard. You know, you're going through healing and recovering and baby, everything, you know. So when he went back, 
and since then we've been trying to find a routine so she's starting to sleep for a little bit longer stretches now I would say the first stretch from when she sleeps to like the next feeding is anywhere from four, four to five hours, four or five hours. That's good. Um, which is amazing That's for good. yeah under three months because it started off every two hours yeah so get every two to three hours sometimes yeah. one hour you know but, uh, the average was two to three hours so now the first the first stretch is about four hours I would say the average um, and then <laughs> And then after that, it's every, again, every two, three hours. So that's the night routine. And I sleep with her. She's in the bassinet and I sleep next to her in her nursery because I just feel it was easier for me mentally. Now I feel like we're finally ready in the next little while to move on because she's sleeping longer and we're, we feel more comfortable. But so that's the night routine. And during the day, I follow her lead, you know, whatever she needs. If she's alert and she's, a, you know, awake and alert, then, you know, we sing songs and she loves listening to music and talk to her and, you know, she loves the diaper changing is like her favorite time she's yeah. smiling and laughing and like so I kind of I kind of let her lead the way like if she's alert we play games or whatever and then feel her and like okay she's getting like overstimulated now she wants rest so I put on some quiet music or even turn off music completely and then she relaxes and naps or whatever and then uh, and then that's kind of during the day and then the feedings are also based on I don't follow like okay it's like three hours so now she has to eat. I just follow her lead. If she seems hungry, she wants to eat, I feed her. So that would be that would be the general routine. Right, and then night, um, like right before we put her to bed, we'll have bath time. Oh, that's right, yeah. We'll, night. Either I'll bathe her or we take her in the shower with us. Yeah. And then we'll give her a nice a big feed. We'll try, like now she's all eating around five ounces. Yeah. So we'll try to give her all five ounces. And then so uh, we, still, we still we still swallow her just for that first uh, sleep at night. Yeah. And she, she seems, to, she seems up, to, right? yeah, she seems to like it. It's fine. Like, yeah. If she didn't like it, we wouldn't swaddle oh, her. But she, she likes she it. it yeah. So we swaddle her. We put her down. We tell her, okay, it's it's bedtime. We'll see you in the morning. We love you. We're here. <laughs> and she passes a little bit, but most most of the time she just yeah. passes out and, yeah. and sleeps for those you know four or five hours. That's right. So like Dimitri said, it's very important for like we read a lot about establishing good sleeping habits, and part of that is having a sleep routine, basically, right? right? And part of that sleep routine. Is whatever works for you for us is bath time feeding and then you know you, you kind of swaddle her talk to her a little bit whatever and then put her down and don't pick her up unless she's obviously crying but she never really cries cries she just kind of fusses a little so we stay in the room make sure she, that she's settled down and falling asleep and then she goes back to goes to sleep, not back to sleep. So that would be um, our routine. Another important point is that uh, during the day where she's sleeping, you don't try to like shut the lights off and make it uh, make it dark. The dark time is for nighttime. That's so right. we differentiate sleep during the day, during the night. So we put her to wherever she's sleeping yeah. during the day. If it's if it's light, it's light. But at nighttime, we put her in the dark, and yeah. so she knows the difference between day sleep and night sleep. Yeah. All right, you guys. So that was all the questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any further questions, feel free to you know ask. Them down below and uh, I will do my best to cover to answer as many questions as I can so thank you guys so much for watching thanks a lot and we're gonna say bye bye, bye, honey. bye. bye. we'll see you guys in the next bye. video see ya. bye